Hey there, everybody. Good morning. It is Pastor Josh, and it is Monday, October 21st. My friends, I hope and pray that your day is off to an amazing start, and we have a, a new week before us with tons of opportunities and, and things for us to um, witness to how God is working in our life to share um, the grace and love of Jesus Christ with other people and to be able to go out and to serve and and, and experience um, the people that God puts on our paths and to, to, to serve them and minister to them in some unique and, and powerful ways. So friends, I just pray a blessing upon that. And as we come together in the spirit of this devotion this morning, I'm going to invite us as I normally do to just calm and center ourselves or just take a pause even though our week's just beginning but to just pause so that um, we set the intention that our, our focus is going to be on on the presence of God in our lives and we're going to um, cast away the distractions that w would seek to pull us away from that um, this morning. So friends let's open up with a word of prayer. Almighty and loving God, we just come before you humbly, and we sit at your feet, desiring to just be in your presence, to experience your love and grace washing and flowing over us, to hear your truth and your wisdom. And Lord, we also desire that as we do that, that we would be experience transformation from the inside out and Lord that your Holy Spirit would empower us then to go out into the world into the different spheres that you have placed each of us that we might be a witness that we might be a source of your light in that place Father God, as we come into this devotion, we just again ask that you would open our hearts, ears, and minds to hear the things that you have to say, to help us really apply the scriptures to, to understand your truth and seek to live it out in a powerful expression of our faith. So Lord, as we begin this week, we, we give it to you. We release our own control and we desire that you guide us and lead us each and every step of the way. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, friends. Well, we are continuing on in our devotional series going through the Gospel of Mark. And we are going to be looking at, again, a pretty small passage today. Um, chapter 10, verses 13 through 16. Um, in my Bible, this the subheading is Jesus Blesses the Little Children. All right. So if you have your Bible or a phone app, I um, encourage you to follow along and to just highlight um, or make note of the things that maybe the Spirit um, brings to your attention as we go through this. So it says, People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them, and the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, he laid hands on them, and he blessed them. All right, friends. Well, this is a, a very interesting scene, uh, scene right? There's, there's so, two sort of competing approaches to, to what's going on um, in, this, in these few verses here. And so... Obviously, one of the things that we have talked about previously last week in a couple of our devotions was um, the fact that the disciples were really wrestling with this idea of who was going to be the greatest in the kingdom, right? And they're, they're jockeying for position based on kind of worldly cultural, <coughs> excuse me, understandings. And Jesus warns them, says, look, guys, you need to you need to be like little children, right? You you need to to be open and and to just have the awe and wonder of who God is and what God is doing, and you need to to not look towards the culture and and the worldly systems that that promise power and influence and prestige based on a certain set of factors because that's not the way it works in my kingdom, right? 
And so, again, we've we've looked at a couple of different things where the um, where the disciples have struggled, right? So they they argue amongst themselves. Um, Jesus tells them not to put a stumbling block before the little ones, right? Before those, again, we can maybe say children, or we can say those who are just trying to come to faith, right? And now, quite literally, we have children who are being brought to Jesus so Jesus can bless and minister to them, and the disciples begin to get in the way. Now, friends, this this couldn't, in some ways, be more ironic, right? Despite the the proceedings that have happened, they now take this position to try to prevent children from coming to Jesus. Why exactly they're doing this? Not maybe sure. Maybe they're trying to be protective of him. <coughs> maybe it's because, you know, children at that time, although considered important, weren't necessarily at the same level or status as um, a man would have been. Right? There could be any number of, of reasons. Right, Maybe they feel like this is just a really serious and somber time for ministry and the kids and their playing and chaos might disrupt what's going on. You know, The text doesn't tell us, but Jesus steps in, he intervenes, and he gets pretty stern with the disciples. He says, look guys, I've already told you, don't put a stumbling block in front of these kids. Don't prevent them from coming to me. Okay, And they're doing this quite literally. Now, friends, I would say as we think about this for our own life and our own times, you know, the same message applies for us. And we need to, I think, be very cognizant of the things that are going on in our world, how we're raising our kids, the ideas they're being exposed to, um, and, and many different things throughout um, their childhood years, right? Because, again, friends, there are some things going on in our world, and when we look at some of the mental health and some of the things that are going on in our children's lives, you know, things are not always as rosy as we'd like to make them out. You know, in fact, I just started reading a book called The Boy Crisis, and it's a very sobering look at how our boys specifically are really lagging behind and really struggling because of the complex nature of all these different factors coming against them and their mental health is deteriorating rapidly to the point where at different stages of their life they're they're four to six times or more likely to harm themselves to harm other people Right, and so friends, when I think about things, when I see things like that, it just it just stirs my soul because as as a father, I just love my kids, and and as a pastor, one of the one of the areas of passion that I have is is being able to minister to our kids at all levels, right? I I enjoy the 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 kids and the children and youth program that we have at our church, and I try to participate in that as as deeply as I can because. I understand how it, how important it is, especially during this day and age, although we could say that for any age, but given the challenge of the time that these kids are growing up, how important it is for them to have a foundation of faith, right? And and there's nothing cooler, I think, than, than watching kids grow in their faith and come to this understanding and to, to learn to discern and to see how God is working in their lives, to see how they respond when their prayers are answered, right? And so, friends, we we as adults, you know, need to be cognizant of the fact that we're not allowing, you know, some of these outside forces to come in and constantly um, affect our children, right? We also have the, the obligation and the responsibility as parents, as grandparents or even as, as I'll just use the uh, general term, elders in our society to share our wisdom and our experience with these kids because it's important that they understand how things were. It's also important that, that, that they gain some of the wisdom and understanding that, that we have to give them based on our experience across the things that we've learned because one of the things that, that I find immensely striking for for children in our own time 
is the amount of information that they're exposed to at any one time, right? Friends, for those of us that, that grew up before the internet or even early in the internet, right, we know what life was like before that, right? It, it was slower. People, you know, did old-fashioned things. You know, you didn't have social media. You didn't have the ability to instantly text someone and communicate with someone anywhere in the world. And yet, friends, we find that our kids are being sucked into that and they're spending hours and hours and hours of their day on all these social media apps and all of these things and they're constantly getting bombarded with all of these messages. What it's like to be beautiful, what it's like to be successful, right? Given the, the divisive and polarized political climate we're in, right? It's, they're, they're constantly being hit with all of these political messages, right? It's, friends, I, I mean, Maybe I was naive as a kid, and I don't remember talking a lot about politics until I was really in like late middle school, high school area, air in in, in my um, middle school or high school time. And yet now, because of social media, my kids are parroting back different commercials based politically, and they don't, you know, they don't really know how to even decipher through them. They just, well. Well, this candidate's going to do this, and this candidate's going to do that, and this candidate's bad because of this, and this candidate's bad because of that, and it's like, oh my gosh, you know, like the there's a difference in how we have to pa parent and and lead our kids through these because they have access to so much information all of the time, and one of the things, friends, that we're seeing, and especially as we watch again the rise of artificial intelligence. Right, artificial intelligence is going to become more and more efficient about being able to show us the things that really speak to our heart. The problem with it is it's exactly that. It's artificial. Right? And those of us, again, I think this is a, a big d deal for those of us that understand that it is artificial, that it's not real, that it can't provide the same level of intimacy and connection and relationship and instability um, is to go back and to share our experience and to call the kids out and say look some of this technology is going to be really good it's going to revolutionize and innovate a lot of things in your life but it's never able it's never going to be able to provide you with the things that you need the things that are going to be most satisfactory in your life right it's never going to be able to provide intimacy it's never going to be able to provide you connection right it's going to give you a, a false sense of some of these things and so friends we've got a lot to do to to speak into our kids um, because this is a, a vital and, and an important time for us and so friends this week or uh, you know today and this week as we go through I'd, I'd encourage you as a as an action step to find some way to really speak into the life of a child in in your life again whether it's your own child whether it's a grandchild a neighbor child um, you know maybe you go do something to support a school or an org uh, 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 children and youth organization something that you can do to share your faith to witness and to provide you know a uh, a sense of coming alongside in the development of relationship for our kids okay and friends again maybe some of you have strained relationships with your kids your grandkids maybe you never ever see them maybe you don't talk to them maybe things just seem really distant right and and we understand that again it's there are things that happen there are challenges we face as as parents as families but maybe it's time to take the bold step and reach out and to just offer a phone call right maybe it's time to to write a letter send a postcard as old-fashioned as that sounds or maybe it's time to just begin to lift them up in prayer and ask God to begin to heal your heart and their hearts so that that relationship can be restored and redeemed so friends I hope that you have found this meaningful and I hope that you'll You'll take on the challenge to, to come around and support our kids. Again, I don't really care what age they are. You know, when I think of kids, I generally think about the generations that are in their youth, but we some of you have adult children, 
right? And some of you have grandkids. <coughs> so find ways to support our kids and let's as as a community, you know, make sure we're not doing things that put stumbling blocks before them in their faith. Right? Let's not let's not get really divisive with some of the things that go on in our own personal lives because the kids don't know how to discern and critically think through that yet depending on their age. Right? And let's let's show them the love of Jesus in all that we are able to do. So my friends, I hope that you have found this meaningful. We will be back tomorrow morning at 8 a.m. I wish you a blessing upon your day and we'll see you later. Bye-bye.